So what the heck are we looking at? Well, that's a good question. I don't really have an answer yet. A friend stopped by today. Uh, he was transporting a bunch of vintage radios and TVs and he asked me if I wanted any. So I took a look through them. But as you all know, by now, if you've watched any of my videos, I have no space. But this caught my eye. So I... Uh, I have it. <laughs> it's a Bel Air, B E L A I R E. Apparently, it's a combination black and white TV, clock, and AM radio. There is no back on it, there's no markings on the bottom, there's no date, there's no serial number. If you Google Bel Air, all you're going to find is a whole lot of references to the Fresh Prince TV show and a reference of course to the photographs I put and posted on Flickr and a reference to an eBay auction for this very same set from November of 2010 just probably where my friend got it and I did find one other reference with a, a photo of a set that looked to be in somewhat better condition in that it had the channel knob on it this is not the original channel knob on the right hand side here. It should have a, a silvery insert like the one on the left does. As near as I can make out, this is from the early 60s. For sure it's got tubes in it, but it does have some silicon rectifier diodes. There might be a transistor or two or three hiding in there somewhere. I have not pulled the chassis out yet. So, taking a closer look. Starting on the left hand side, we have a function switch for off TV and radio, volume knob, and a radio tuning knob. And on the right hand side we have channel fine tuning, we got the clock, we have contrast, and brightness. Up top we've got some built in telescoping antennas. Cabinet, kind of cheap. Made out of some, oh, uh, probably plywood, secondary wood, and then some veneer that's missing some bits here and there and separating a little bit. I posted some photos on video card when I just got a response a little while ago from one of the uh, rather knowledgeable collectors and he says he's come across a few sets that seem to be from the same era but not this particular set. He thinks they were made in small quantities in Japan and this may have been purchased by a serviceman and brought it back home. I also found one other reference to this set and it was at the Early TV Foundation, which is based in Ohio, and they had it listed under donations in 2010. People donate uh, TVs to their to the museum, so it's entirely possible somebody donated it to the Early Television Foundation. And this is, really isn't their thing; they mainly go for older and uh, sort of the American stuff. So they may very well have auctioned this off to raise funds. For the museum, so <laughs> they have been done in the museum, went up on eBay. My friend got it, and now I've got it. Let's see, I'll rearrange the camera and turn the set around or on the chair so we get a better look inside the chassis. Here's a close up look at the back of the set. This is the side that has the clock on it and a channel tuner so the TV tuning components are over here it's the antenna this is probably the vertical circuit here there was one photo on the cached eBay listing from last year that showed it playing but the vertical height was only like two-thirds and there's a fried resistor right here and this looks like it, something that could very well be a vertical output transformer Here's the neck of the picture tube. And probably the horizontal stuff over here. And then finally over here, we've got the AM radio. 
and power supply. So there's a loop antenna there, and a power transformer, and there's a silicon diode as I mentioned. Just looks rather crudely put in there, so that might be an old repair. Now service info on this set is going to be impossible to locate most likely. So, well, I can certainly look at all the components and read the values and replace them. Like that's a 0.5 microfarad cap, and it's 0.05. All the components seem to be labeled pretty well in English. A lot of the caps are Rubicon, like this guy. The rest are Noble, and I guess I have one other brand in here somewhere. Oh, at any rate, they seem to be uh, pretty readable. Oh, River. That was the other brand, River. Now, what I want to do now is grab a screwdriver and pull the chassis out. I think there's a few screws underneath, and then this whole thing will pull out the back. Maybe we can find some more uh, clues about who actually manufactured this uh, where and when. I ended up having to unmount the antenna to get the chassis out. Here's all that's left on the cabinet. The speaker and the clock. And this label. Do not read Japanese, so I have no idea what that might say. Looks like there's some kind of sticky patches on this clock. There's bits of old tape. Maybe that covers uh well, there's a hole up there. I wonder if you can uh another one there. I wonder if you can service the radio in some way. Maybe you can put some oil drops in there or something. So I can take these screws out and get the cover off too. My friend said the clock didn't really work right. And here is the chassis. Sure looks to be all tube to me. And very clean. Certainly no corrosion and not a whole lot of dust. I've been kind of curious whether this was a full transformer set or a partial transformer set. This doesn't seem like quite a big enough transformer to power the TV. Eh, or maybe it is. I guess it does have some heft to it. And by the time this was made, sets were probably somewhat low power. But let's see. Well, that's a 12 something. And that's a 12. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is. What I'm curious about is if I add up the tube filaments, can you get like 120 volts? Usually in a series strung set, you'll find tubes that are 12 volt, 25 volt, 19 volt. If it's a transformer set, they're usually all 6.3 volt tubes. So we have three 12s right here. There's another transformer down there. Filter cap. Big Rubicon cap down there. 100 microfarad, 180 working volts. Didn't see any date codes. So one of these is horizontal output tube. I guess that'd be this guy. And this would be the high voltage rectifier. Maybe that is. That's kind of curious. Okay, definitely this is. That guy. Because the filament supply comes right off of the flyback down in there. It's a thick blue wire. And then this is driving the my back. Well, actually, both of these are. Both of these tubes are driving the flyback. 
That's uh, maybe it's some kind of push-pull arrangement, or maybe they're running in parallel. But they're different tubes. Hmm. Curious. Of course, like I said, I have no schematic, no service info. So I'm just going to have to wing it if I want to work on this set. It's also later than the sets I'm used to working on, which is not going to help. At least the radio is simple. All I see are two tubes. A 6BA6, and I think this is a 6BE6. Yep. And that's it. I imagine it shares the power supply and audio amp with the rest of the set. So the only thing we're going to have down in here is an oscillator mixer, which is probably what's on this side. And this would be an IF amp. And they probably used a diode for the detector. And then fed the output of that into the audio amp that the TV is using. Put that back in later. Pilot lights. So yeah, this, uh, this will be interesting to work on for sure. Another Ruby can. These tube holders are something I'm not quite used to either. I'm not sure why some tubes have them and some don't. You think you put them all on, put them on all the tubes or none of the tubes? Six A W eight. These are all very common American tubes, though, so nothing, nothing unusual, that's for sure. And the tube brands, we've got a number of Hitachi, but yeah, I'd say there's more Hitachi than anything else. There are some RCAs. I'm sure those are later replacements. Now, the opinion online is that this is probably not Hitachi because it would have been higher quality if it was Hitachi, but. Who knows? Don't see any marks on the coils, really. The manufacturer's marks or the tuner. Pitcher tube. Oh, it's a Hitachi. Okay. Looks like a 210CB4. That might actually be in my Syncor CR70. Oh, no, I bet that's the day code, 6210, 10th month of 1962. Which is exactly what my guess was, early 60s. Hitachi, Hitachi. Another Hitachi. All right, this is a five series tube, so I bet this is series wired. When you start seeing oddball numbers, like I said, like we got a mix of twelves and sixes and a five. Oh, this is a four volt tube. Now these are definitely some Japanese tubes. Four R dash H H two. I don't know what the heck that is. That might cross-reference to something equivalent in the American nomenclature. I don't know. These tube shields are kind of funky. Conical. Right, I'm going to keep poking around, take some photos, post them online, see what people have to say, and then see if indeed I can make some, find that number in my uh, Suncor list. Then we can try testing it. It turns out the Suncor CR70 does indeed have the 210 CB4 listed. 
But before we get into that, I should mention, I was being a knucklehead a moment ago, horizontal output tube, and this is the damper tube, and then we have the high voltage rectifier. Both the horizontal output tube and the damper uh, have those Japanese tube numbers. Horizontal output was hard to read, but I think it's a 12G. Dash B3 and the damper tube is definitely a 12R dash K19. High voltage tube is too tough to get at, but uh, I'll do a little research online and see if those cross reference. Otherwise, um, I don't really know how to test them. <laughs> All right, so the CRT is listed. Unfortunately, it uses adapter number four, which I do not have. Instead of adapter number four, what do I have? I have two adapter five and six. Some of these Suncor adapters have flip sockets, one on either side. So this is one and two, and then presumably there's a three and a four listed inside the lid there. And what do I have? Two, five, and sixes. Looks slightly different though. I'm not sure what the difference is. One is green and one's black. Otherwise, I imagine they're functionally identical. So if anybody has an extra three and four and wants to trade for a five and six, let me know. But what I do have is a universal adapter which in this case I was able to rig it up. Turns out this runs on a 5 volt filament, so I got that set up. And we have no HK shorts, we have no G1 shorts. Cut off, very responsive when you turn this control. And the mission, excellent. Life test. Rock solid. So, seems like I have a very good picture tube. So I'm going to do a little more research online, post some of these tube numbers, see ya. If anybody has any more info for me over the next couple days. And I have some uh, another TV project I want to wrap up. And then uh, I think I'll take a stab at working on this set. I figure what I'll do is test the tubes as best I can. Uh, check the resistors, especially, you know, like this fried one here. I hope I can read the value off of it. I suspect I won't be able to because it's all black, <laughs> so that's going to be a little tough. Uh, and I will test the electrolytics, and if I find any that are bad and they can't be reformed, I'll replace those. And then uh, I'll try powering it up. These capacitors, I imagine some of them, uh, uh, plastic caps actually and there's a decent chance that they're still good or good enough that this set will function.